Types of Cells in the Body The human body is composed of various types of cells, each with unique structures and functions. These cells work together to perform vital functions that keep the body healthy and functioning properly. In this essay, I will discuss the different types of cells in the body, their structures, and their functions. One of the most abundant types of cells in the body is the epithelial cell. Epithelial cells are found throughout the body and are responsible for forming the lining of many internal and external surfaces, such as the skin, lungs, and digestive tract. These cells are typically flat and thin, allowing them to form tight barriers that protect the body from external threats. Another essential type of cell in the body is the muscle cell. Muscle cells, also known as myocytes, are responsible for generating the force required for movement. There are three types of muscle cells in the body, skeletal muscle cells, cardiac muscle cells, and smooth muscle cells. Skeletal muscle cells are responsible for voluntary movement, such as walking or lifting weights. Cardiac muscle cells make up the heart and are responsible for pumping blood throughout the body. Smooth muscle cells are found in the walls of organs, such as the stomach and intestines, and are responsible for involuntary movements, such as digestion. The nervous system is another crucial system in the body, and it is composed of various types of cells, including neurons and glial cells. Neurons are responsible for transmitting electrical signals throughout the body, allowing for communication between different parts of the body. Glial cells provide support and protection to the neurons and help maintain the overall function of the nervous system. Blood is composed of various types of cells, including red blood cells, white blood cells, and platelets. Red blood cells are responsible for carrying oxygen throughout the body, while white blood cells are responsible for fighting off infections and diseases. Platelets are essential for blood clotting and preventing excessive bleeding. The immune system is composed of various types of cells, including T cells, B cells, and natural killer cells. T cells are responsible for attacking infected cells and cancer cells. B cells are responsible for producing antibodies that target specific pathogens. Natural killer cells are responsible for killing cells that are infected with viruses or have become cancerous. Lastly, there are various types of cells in the endocrine system, which is responsible for producing and regulating hormones. These cells include glandular cells, such as those found in the pancreas, thyroid, and adrenal glands. Hormones produced by these cells play crucial roles in regulating many different bodily functions, including metabolism, growth, and reproduction. In conclusion, the human body is composed of many different types of cells, each with unique structures and functions. These cells work together to maintain the health and functioning of the body. Understanding the different types of cells in the body is crucial for understanding the complex systems that keep the body healthy and functioning properly. In addition to the aforementioned types of cells, there are also various types of cells in the reproductive system. These include sperm cells and egg cells, which are essential for reproduction. Sperm cells are produced in the testes and are responsible for fertilizing the egg. Egg cells are produced in the ovaries and are released during ovulation. Once fertilized, the egg cell develops into an embryo, which eventually develops into a fetus. Another important type of cell in the body is the stem cell. 
Stem cells are unique because they have the ability to develop into many different types of cells in the body. They can be found in various parts of the body, including bone marrow and the umbilical cord. Stem cells are used in regenerative medicine to repair damaged tissue and organs. Cells also play a critical role in the development and function of the immune system. The thymus, located in the chest, is responsible for the production and maturation of T-cells. The bone marrow, located in the center of bones, is responsible for the production of white blood cells. These cells play an important role in protecting the body from infections and diseases. Lastly, there are various types of cells in the digestive system. These include epithelial cells, which form the lining of the digestive tract, and various types of cells in the pancreas, liver, and gallbladder. These cells produce enzymes and hormones that are essential for the digestion and absorption of nutrients. In conclusion, the human body is composed of many different types of cells, each with unique structures and functions. These cells work together to maintain the health and functioning of the body. Understanding the different types of cells in the body is crucial for understanding the various systems that keep the body healthy and functioning properly. The diversity of cells in the body highlights the complexity and sophistication of the human body. Furthermore, there are various types of cells in the respiratory system, which are responsible for the exchange of gases between the body and the environment. These include the alveolar cells, which are found in the lungs and are responsible for the exchange of oxygen and carbon dioxide. Other cells in the respiratory system include the ciliated cells, which help to move mucus and foreign particles out of the lungs. Cells also play a crucial role in the cardiovascular system. The heart is composed of various types of cells, including the cardiac muscle cells mentioned earlier, which are responsible for pumping blood throughout the body. The endothelial cells, which line the blood vessels, play a crucial role in regulating blood flow and preventing blood clotting. Platelets, which were also mentioned earlier, are essential for blood clotting and preventing excessive bleeding. Another important type of cell in the body is the adipocyte, which is responsible for storing fat. Adipocytes play a critical role in energy storage and are also involved in the regulation of various hormones, such as insulin and leptin. Finally, there are various types of cells in the skeletal system. These include osteoblasts, which are responsible for building new bone tissue, and osteoclasts, which are responsible for breaking down and absorbing old bone tissue. There are also various types of cells in the cartilage, such as chondrocytes, which are responsible for maintaining the structure of the cartilage. Parts of a cell Cells are the building blocks of all living organisms, including humans. There are many different types of cells in the human body, each with unique structures and functions. One way to classify cells is based on their different parts or organelles. The nucleus is one of the most important organelles in the cell. It contains the genetic material, DNA, which is responsible for the development and function of the organism. The nucleus is surrounded by a nuclear envelope that separates it from the rest of the cell. The nucleolus, which is located inside the nucleus, is responsible for producing ribosomes, which are essential for protein synthesis. Another important organelle in the cell is the mitochondrion. 
Mitochondria are responsible for producing energy in the form of ATP through a process called cellular respiration. Mitochondria have their own DNA, separate from the DNA in the nucleus, and can reproduce on their own. The endoplasmic reticulum, ER, is another important organelle in the cell. There are two types of ER, rough and smooth. Rough ER is covered in ribosomes and is responsible for protein synthesis and folding. Smooth ER is involved in lipid synthesis and detoxification. Golgi apparatus is an organelle that is involved in processing and packaging proteins and lipids for transport. It is composed of flattened stacks of membranes called cisterni. The Golgi apparatus is also involved in the modification of proteins through the addition of sugars and other molecules. Lysosomes are organelles that are responsible for breaking down and recycling cellular waste in materials. They contain enzymes that can break down proteins, carbohydrates, lipids, and nucleic acids. Cytoskeleton is a network of protein fibers that provides structural support and helps with movement within the cell. There are three types of cytoskeletal fibers, microtubules, microfilaments, and intermediate filaments. Microtubules are involved in the movement of organelles and chromosomes during cell division. Microfilaments are involved in muscle contraction and cell movement. Intermediate filaments provide structural support to the cell. Cell membranes are also an important part of the cell. The cell membrane is composed of a lipid bilayer that separates the interior of the cell from the external environment. The cell membrane is responsible for regulating the exchange of materials between the cell and its environment. In conclusion, cells are composed of many different organelles and structures, each with unique functions. Understanding the different parts of the cell is crucial for understanding the complex processes that occur within the cell and the overall functioning of the organism. Each organelle plays a specific role in the maintenance of the cell and the overall health of the organism. The diversity of organelles in the cell highlights the sophistication and complexity of life. In addition to the organelles mentioned earlier, there are various other structures and components within the cell that are essential for its proper functioning. For example, the cytoplasm is the fluid that fills the cell and surrounds the organelles. It is composed of water, ions, and various organic molecules, and is responsible for maintaining the shape of the cell. Ribosomes are another important component of the cell. They are responsible for synthesizing proteins using the genetic information stored in the DNA. Ribosomes can be found in the cytoplasm or attached to the rough endoplasmic reticulum. The centrosome is an organelle that is involved in cell division. It contains a pair of centrioles, which are involved in the separation of chromosomes during cell division. The centrosome also plays a role in the organization of the cytoskeleton. Vacuoles are organelles that are responsible for storing various substances, such as water, nutrients, and waste products. Plant cells typically have a large central vacuole, which helps to maintain turgor pressure and provides structural support to the cell. Chloroplasts are organelles that are found in plant cells and are responsible for photosynthesis. They contain chlorophyll, which absorbs light energy and converts it into chemical energy in the form of glucose. Finally, there are various types of junctions between cells that are essential for their proper functioning. 
Tight junctions, for example, form a barrier between cells and help to prevent the leakage of fluids between tissues. Gap junctions, on the other hand, allow for the exchange of ions and small molecules between cells. In conclusion, cells are composed of many different structures and components, each with unique functions. Understanding the different parts of the cell is crucial for understanding the complex processes that occur within the cell and the overall functioning of the organism. Each component plays a specific role in the maintenance of the cell and the overall health of the organism. The diversity of structures and components in the cell highlights the sophistication and complexity of life. Moreover, cells have various types of receptors on their surface that allow them to respond to different signals from the environment. For example, Membrane receptors can detect signals from hormones, neurotransmitters, and other signaling molecules. These receptors are often involved in signaling pathways that regulate various cellular processes, such as metabolism, growth, and differentiation. The extracellular matrix is another important component of the cell that provides structural support and helps to regulate cell behavior. The extracellular matrix is composed of various proteins and other molecules, such as collagen, fibronectin, and laminin. It plays a role in cell adhesion, migration, and differentiation. In addition to the various organelles and structures within the cell, there are also various types of molecules that are essential for its proper functioning. For example, Enzymes are proteins that catalyze chemical reactions within the cell, allowing for the conversion of one molecule into another. Hormones are signaling molecules that are produced by various glands in the body and are involved in regulating various physiological processes. The Life Cycle of a Cell Cells are the fundamental units of life and are essential for the survival of all living organisms. The life cycle of a cell is a complex process that involves growth, replication, and division. The cell cycle is divided into two main stages, interphase and mitosis. Interphase is the longest stage of the cell cycle, during which the cell grows and carries out its normal metabolic functions. It is further divided into three phases, G1, S, and G2. In the G1 phase, the cell grows and carries out its normal functions. In the S phase, the cell replicates its DNA in preparation for cell division. In the G2 phase, the cell continues to grow and prepare for cell division. Mitosis is the process by which a single cell divides into two identical daughter cells. It is a complex process that can be divided into four main stages, prophase, metaphase, anaphase, and telophase. During prophase, the chromatin condenses into visible chromosomes, and the nuclear envelope breaks down. The spindle apparatus, which is composed of microtubules, begins to form. During metaphase, the chromosomes align along the equator of the cell, known as the metaphase plate. The spindle fibers attach to the kinetochores on the chromosomes, and tension is created as the microtubules pull the chromosomes towards opposite poles of the cell. During anaphase, the sister chromatids separate and are pulled towards opposite poles of the cell. The spindle fibers not attached to the chromosomes push the poles of the cell apart, elongating the cell. During telophase, the nuclear envelope reforms around the chromosomes at each pole, forming two new nuclei. The chromosomes begin to unwind 
and the spindle fibers disassemble. Finally, the cell divides into two daughter cells during cytokinesis. The cell cycle is tightly regulated by various checkpoints that ensure that the cell is ready to proceed to the next stage of the cycle. The checkpoints monitor the cell's DNA integrity and ensure that it has replicated properly before the cell proceeds to the next stage of the cycle. Dysregulation of these checkpoints can lead to various diseases, such as cancer. In addition to mitosis, cells can also undergo meiosis, a specialized type of cell division that occurs only in the reproductive cells. Meiosis involves two rounds of division, resulting in the production of four daughter cells that have half the number of chromosomes as the parent cell. Meiosis is important for sexual reproduction, as it allows for the mixing and reshuffling of genetic material between individuals. Cells can also differentiate into various types of specialized cells, such as muscle cells, nerve cells, and blood cells. This process is controlled by the expression of specific genes and is critical for the development and functioning of tissues and organs in the body. Furthermore, cells have the ability to repair and regenerate damaged tissues. For example, stem cells are capable of differentiating into various types of cells and can be used for tissue repair and regeneration. Additionally, some tissues, such as the liver and skin, have a high regenerative capacity and can repair themselves after injury. Finally, aging and death are also a natural part of the cell cycle. As cells age, they accumulate damage to their DNA and other cellular components, which can lead to functional decline and senescence. Ultimately, cells can undergo apoptosis or programmed cell death, which is essential for the proper functioning of tissues and organs in the body. In conclusion, the life cycle of a cell is a complex and dynamic process that involves growth, replication, differentiation, and division. Understanding the different stages of the cell cycle and the mechanisms that regulate it is critical for understanding the normal functioning of the human body and the development of new therapies to treat diseases. The study of cell biology is an essential component of modern medical research, as it provides insights into the mechanisms that underlie health and disease. One of the key features of the cell cycle is its tight regulation by various proteins, enzymes, and signaling pathways. These mechanisms ensure that the cell progresses through the different stages of the cycle in a timely and controlled manner. Dysregulation of these mechanisms can lead to various diseases, such as cancer, where cells continue to divide uncontrollably. Another important aspect of the cell cycle is the differentiation of cells into specialized cell types. This process is essential for the development and functioning of tissues and organs in the body. The differentiation of cells is controlled by various signaling pathways and the expression of specific genes. In addition to differentiation, cells also have the ability to repair and regenerate damaged tissues. Stem cells, in particular, have the ability to differentiate into various cell types and can be used for tissue repair and regeneration. Additionally, some tissues, such as the liver and skin, have a high regenerative capacity and can repair themselves after injury. Furthermore, cells are capable of undergoing programmed cell death, or apoptosis, which is essential for the proper functioning of tissues and organs. Apoptosis is a tightly regulated process that eliminates unwanted or damaged cells and plays a critical role in the development and maintenance of tissues. Lastly, aging and death are natural parts of the cell cycle. As cells age, 
they accumulate damage to their DNA and other cellular components, which can lead to functional decline and senescence. Ultimately, cells can undergo apoptosis or programmed cell death, which is essential for the proper functioning of tissues and organs in the body. In conclusion, the cell cycle is a complex and dynamic process that involves growth, replication, differentiation, and division. The tight regulation of the cell cycle is essential for maintaining the health of the organism and preventing the development of various diseases. Understanding the mechanisms that regulate the cell cycle is critical for the development of new therapies to treat diseases and improve human health. Moreover, the cell cycle is influenced by various internal and external factors, such as hormones, nutrients, and environmental cues. For example, the availability of nutrients can impact the progression of the cell cycle, with cells entering a dormant state in times of nutrient scarcity. Additionally, hormones, such as growth factors, can stimulate cell growth and division. The cell cycle is also influenced by various signaling pathways, which communicate information between cells and regulate the progression of the cycle. For example, the P53 pathway is a critical tumor suppressor pathway that is activated in response to DNA damage and can halt the progression of the cell cycle to allow for DNA repair. Dysregulation of this pathway can lead to the development of cancer. Structure of DNA and RNA The structure of DNA and RNA is fundamental to understanding the molecular basis of life. DNA and RNA are both nucleic acids, which are composed of nucleotides, the building blocks of DNA and RNA. The structure of DNA is a double helix, consisting of two complementary strands of nucleotides that are held together by hydrogen bonds between the nitrogenous bases. The nitrogenous bases are adenine, A, thymine, T, cytosine, C, and guanine, G. The sequence of these bases determines the genetic information encoded in the DNA. The sugar in DNA is deoxyribose, which is a 5-carbon sugar. Each nucleotide in DNA consists of a sugar molecule, a phosphate group, and a nitrogenous base. The phosphate group forms a covalent bond with the sugar of the adjacent nucleotide, forming the backbone of the DNA molecule. RNA has a similar structure to DNA but differs in several key ways. RNA is usually single-stranded and contains the sugar ribose instead of deoxyribose. The nitrogenous bases in RNA are adenine, a, uracil, U, cytosine, C, and guanine, G. Uracil replaces thymine in RNA and pairs with adenine via hydrogen bonds. There are three types of RNA, messenger RNA, mRNA, transfer RNA, TRNA, and ribosomal RNA, RNA. mRNA carries genetic information from DNA to the ribosome, where it is translated into a protein. TRNA brings amino acids to the ribosome, where they are added to the growing protein chain. RNA forms part of the ribosome, which is the site of protein synthesis. The process of DNA replication involves the synthesis of a new DNA strand that is complementary to the original strand. DNA replication is a highly regulated process that involves multiple enzymes and proteins. The first step in DNA replication is the separation of the two strands of DNA by an enzyme called helicase. 
Another enzyme called DNA polymerase then synthesizes a new strand of DNA using the original strand as a template. The result is two identical copies of the original DNA molecule. The process of transcription involves the synthesis of mRNA from DNA. Transcription is carried out by an enzyme called RNA polymerase, which binds to the DNA template and synthesizes a complementary mRNA strand. The mRNA then carries the genetic information from the DNA to the ribosome, where it is translated into a protein. In conclusion, the structure of DNA and RNA is essential to understanding the molecular basis of life. The double helix structure of DNA, composed of complementary strands of nucleotides, encodes the genetic information that is essential for the development and functioning of all living organisms. RNA, with its single-stranded structure and different sugar and nitrogenous base composition, plays a crucial role in protein synthesis. Understanding the processes of DNA replication and transcription is also critical for understanding how genetic information is passed from one generation to the next and how it is translated into functional proteins. The study of DNA in RNA structure and function has implications for a wide range of fields, from medicine to biotechnology to evolutionary biology. Moreover, the structure of DNA and RNA has important implications for the study of genetic diseases and the development of new treatments. Mutations in the DNA sequence can lead to the development of genetic diseases, such as cystic fibrosis, sickle cell anemia, and Huntington's disease. Understanding the structure and function of DNA and RNA is essential for identifying these mutations and developing new treatments that target the underlying genetic causes of these diseases. The structure of DNA and RNA is also critical for the study of evolution and the relationships between different species. By examining the similarities and differences in the DNA and RNA sequences of different organisms, Scientists can infer the evolutionary relationships between different species and trace the history of life on Earth. In addition to its medical and evolutionary implications, the structure of DNA and RNA has also led to the development of new technologies and techniques for studying genetics. For example, polymerase chain reaction, PCR, is a technique used to amplify DNA sequences, allowing for the detection of small amounts of DNA and the analysis of genetic variation. Additionally, genome editing tools, such as CRISPR-Cas9, allow for the precise manipulation of DNA sequences and hold promise for the treatment of genetic diseases. Furthermore, the study of DNA and RNA structure and function has important implications for biotechnology and agriculture. For example, genetic engineering techniques can be used to modify the DNA of crops to increase yield, improve resistance to pests and disease, and enhance nutritional content. Lastly, the study of DNA and RNA structure and function has led to the development of new technologies for environmental monitoring and remediation. For example, environmental DNA, EDNA, Analysis involves the detection and analysis of DNA from environmental samples, such as water or soil, to monitor the presence of different species and track changes in ecosystems over time. In conclusion, the structure of DNA and RNA is essential to understanding the molecular basis of life and has important implications for medicine. Evolution, biotechnology, agriculture, and the environment. The study of DNA and RNA structure and function has led to the development of new technologies and treatments for genetic diseases. 
as well as a deeper understanding of the evolutionary relationships between different species. The study of DNA and RNA structure and function will continue to play a vital role in shaping our understanding of the natural world and our ability to address the complex challenges facing society today. Furthermore, the structure of DNA and RNA has also contributed to our understanding of epigenetics, which refers to changes in gene expression that are not due to changes in the DNA sequence itself. Epigenetic modifications, such as DNA methylation and histone modification, can have profound effects on gene expression and are involved in a variety of biological processes, including development, aging, and disease. Moreover, recent advancements in DNA and RNA sequencing technologies have revolutionized the field of genomics, allowing for the rapid and comprehensive analysis of genetic information. For example, whole genome sequencing has enabled the identification of genetic mutations and variations associated with diseases and has paved the way for personalized medicine. In addition, RNA sequencing has allowed for the comprehensive analysis of gene expression profiles, providing insights into the molecular mechanisms underlying different biological processes and diseases. RNA sequencing has also enabled the identification of novel RNA species, such as long non-coding RNAs, which play critical roles in gene regulation and cellular processes. Furthermore, the study of DNA and RNA has important implications for understanding the origin of life and the possibility of extraterrestrial life. The discovery of RNA self-replication and the existence of RNA-based enzymes, known as ribozymes. Distinguish between microorganisms and cells. Microorganisms and cells are two fundamental units of life. Microorganisms, also known as microbes, are microscopic organisms that include bacteria, viruses, fungi, and other tiny creatures. They are single-celled or multicellular organisms that are too small to be seen with the naked eye. On the other hand, cells are the basic unit of life and are the smallest structure that can carry out all of the functions of living organisms. One of the main differences between microorganisms and cells is their size. Microorganisms are much smaller than cells and can only be seen under a microscope. They are typically measured in micrometers, which are one thousandth of a millimeter. In contrast, cells are generally measured in millimeters and are much larger than microorganisms. Another significant difference between microorganisms and cells is their complexity. While microorganisms can be simple or complex, cells are always complex structures that contain a nucleus, organelles, and other structures. Microorganisms are typically unicellular, which means they are made up of only one cell, whereas cells can be either unicellular or multicellular. Microorganisms are also much more diverse than cells. There are many different types of microorganisms, including bacteria, viruses, fungi, and protists. Each of these groups has unique characteristics that distinguish them from one another. In contrast, cells are generally classified into two main categories, prokaryotic and eukaryotic. Prokaryotic cells are simple cells that lack a nucleus and other complex structures, while eukaryotic cells are complex cells that contain a nucleus and other complex structures. In terms of function, microorganisms and cells both play vital roles in living organisms. 
microorganisms are involved in many essential processes, including digestion, decomposition, and nutrient cycling. They are also used in many industries, such as food production and medicine. Cells, on the other hand, are involved in all of the functions of living organisms, including growth, reproduction, and maintenance. In conclusion, while microorganisms and cells share some similarities, such as their role in living organisms, they are fundamentally different in terms of size, complexity, diversity, and function. Understanding these differences is essential for understanding the complexity and diversity of life on Earth. Continuing on from the previous discussion, another notable difference between microorganisms and cells is their reproduction. Microorganisms reproduce much more rapidly than cells and can multiply in large numbers in a short period of time. Some microorganisms, such as bacteria, can reproduce asexually by dividing into two identical daughter cells. Other microorganisms, such as fungi and some protists, reproduce both asexually and sexually. In contrast, cells reproduce through cell division, a process that involves the replication of DNA and the division of the cell into two identical daughter cells. This process is slower and more controlled than the reproduction of microorganisms. Another significant difference between microorganisms and cells is their susceptibility to antibiotics. Antibiotics are drugs used to treat bacterial infections by killing or inhibiting the growth of bacteria. However, antibiotics do not work against viruses, fungi, or other types of microorganisms. This is because these microorganisms have different cell structures and metabolic pathways that are not affected by antibiotics. Cells, on the other hand, do not have a cell wall, which makes them more susceptible to damage from antibiotics. However, cancer cells, which are abnormal cells that grow uncontrollably, can be treated with chemotherapy drugs that target rapidly dividing cells. Lastly, microorganisms and cells have different roles in disease. Microorganisms can cause a range of infectious diseases, such as the flu, pneumonia, and tuberculosis. They can also cause food poisoning and other types of illnesses. Cells, on the other hand, can be affected by diseases such as cancer, autoimmune disorders, and genetic disorders. In conclusion, microorganisms and cells are different in many ways, including their size, complexity, diversity, function, reproduction, susceptibility to antibiotics, and role in disease. Understanding these differences is essential for understanding the complex and diverse world of biology and the role that microorganisms and cells play in it. Another important difference between microorganisms and cells is their genetic material. Microorganisms, including bacteria and viruses, have a simple genetic material that consists of DNA or RNA. This genetic material is located in the cytoplasm of the cell and is not enclosed in a nucleus. In contrast, cells have a complex genetic material that is organized into chromosomes and is enclosed in a nucleus. The genetic material of cells contains all the genetic information needed for the growth, development, and function of the organism. Another difference between microorganisms and cells is their metabolic processes. Microorganisms are capable of carrying out a wide range of metabolic processes, including photosynthesis, respiration, and fermentation. They can also break down complex organic compounds and convert them into simpler forms. 
Cells, on the other hand, have a more specialized metabolism that is specific to the needs of the organism. For example, plant cells can carry out photosynthesis, while animal cells cannot. Microorganisms and cells also have different roles in biotechnology. Microorganisms, such as bacteria and yeasts, are widely used in biotechnology for the production of food, medicine, and industrial products. They can be genetically engineered to produce specific proteins, enzymes, and other products. Cells, on the other hand, are used in biotechnology for research purposes, such as the study of genetic disorders and the development of new drugs. Finally, microorganisms and cells have different roles in the environment. Microorganisms play a critical role in the cycling of nutrients, the decomposition of organic matter, and the maintenance of soil fertility. They are also involved in the formation of symbiotic relationships with other organisms, such as plants and animals. Cells, on the other hand, are important in the development and maintenance of complex ecosystems, such as forests and coral reefs. In summary, microorganisms and cells have many differences, including their genetic material, metabolic processes, roles in biotechnology, and roles in the environment. In summary, microorganisms and cells have many differences, including their genetic material, metabolic processes, roles in biotechnology, and roles in the environment. Animal life is a fascinating and diverse topic that has captured the human imagination for thousands of years. From the majesty of the elephant to the complexity of the human brain, animals have fascinated us with their unique abilities and behaviors. They are an essential part of our planet's ecosystem, playing a vital role in maintaining the delicate balance of nature. However, despite their importance, animals are facing many challenges today, from habitat destruction to climate change and poaching. The impact of human activities on animal populations is significant, with many species now facing extinction. In this context, understanding and protecting animal life has become a critical concern for scientists, conservationists, and policymakers. It is essential to explore the role of animals in the natural world and their impact on human societies. By learning more about animal life and working to protect and preserve it, we can ensure a healthier and more sustainable future for all living beings. Animals are a group of multicellular, eukaryotic organisms classified as the kingdom Animalia, also called Metazoa. In the Five Kingdom Classification System Their bodies grow as they develop and most animals have the ability to move naturally and independently. Most of the major animal phyla known today appeared in the fossil record during the Cambrian explosion, about 542 million years ago. Animals are divided into many smaller groups, some of which include vertebrates, birds. Mammals, amphibians, reptiles, fish, invertebrates, clams, oysters, octopuses, squids, and snails, arthropods, spiders, ticks. Centipedes, insects, and crustaceans, nematodes, earthworms, and leeches, and cundarians, jellyfish, and corals. Etymology-wise, the term animal is derived from the Latin word animalis, meaning having breath. In everyday communication, the term animal is often used to refer to all members of the kingdom Animalia except for humans. In biological terms, animal refers to all members of the kingdom Animalia, including humans. Animals have several distinguishing characteristics that set them apart from other living things. 
Animals are eukaryotic and multicellular, which distinguishes them from bacteria and most unicellular organisms. Animals are heterotrophic, digesting their food within their bodies, which distinguishes them from plants and algae. They also lack cell walls made of cellulose, which is a characteristic of plants. All animals are capable of moving, at least at some point in their life cycle. In most animals, the embryo undergoes a blastula stage, a distinct stage in animal development. With few exceptions, animals have bodies that are organized into tissues. They have muscles for movement and control, nervous tissues for sending and processing signals. And typically a digestive system with a mouth, in organisms like jellyfish, or both a mouth and anus, in organisms like fish. All animals have eukaryotic cells with a nucleus. Almost all animals undergo some form of sexual reproduction. They have small, modal gametes like sperm and larger, non-modal gametes like eggs, which combine to form a zygote that develops into a new organism. Many animal species also have the ability to reproduce asexually, which can occur through parthenogenesis, fragmentation, or budding. The initial zygote develops into a hollow, spherical mass of cells called a blastula, which will then undergo more complex arrangements. In sea sponges, the blastula swims to a new location and develops into a new sponge. In other groups, the blastula undergoes more complicated arrangements. The earliest animals are thought to have evolved from a type of single-celled protist known as a coanoflagellate. Molecular studies place animals in a clade called Episoconta, which also includes fungi and some small parasitic protists which is named after the location of the flagellum on the cell, in contrast to the flagellum being located at the front in other eukaryotes. The first fossil animals are likely those from the Trizona Formation, West Central Flinders, South Australia. These fossils are the first known animals, and date back to around 665 million years ago. The next fossil records that could possibly represent animals are found from the Precambrian period, around 610 million years ago. While difficult to relate to later fossils, they may represent early animal forms, but may also represent a separate and unrelated group. In the early days of classification, Aristotle divided living things into animals and plants, and Carolus Linnaeus followed suit in his first hierarchical classification. Since then, biologists have increasingly emphasized evolutionary relationships, such as the recognition that the first single-celled organisms were considered animals due to their ability to move, but are now classified separately. In Linnaeus's original scheme, animals were one of three kingdoms, divided into the classes Fermes, Insecta, Pisces, Amphibia, Aves, and mammalia. Since then, the last four classes have been merged into a single phylum, Chordata, while the first two have been split into several different phyla. Overall, animals have played a crucial role in the Earth's ecosystems, both as predators and prey, as well as providing numerous benefits to humans, such as companionship, food, and medical advances. Understanding their biology, ecology, and evolution is crucial for the continued conservation and management of animal populations and their habitats. Moreover, animals have also served as important model systems for scientific research, enabling us to better understand biological processes, genetics, and disease mechanisms. Many Nobel Prize-winning discoveries have been made using animals as models, such as the discovery of insulin and the role of DNA in heredity. 
However, the use of animals in research and industry has also been a source of controversy and ethical concerns, leading to calls for more humane and ethical treatment of animals. Animal welfare laws and regulations have been implemented in many countries to ensure that animals used for research or agriculture are treated with respect and care. In addition to their scientific and economic importance, animals also hold cultural and symbolic significance in many societies around the world. They feature prominently in art, literature, mythology, and religion, and are often used as symbols of strength, wisdom, and other virtues. In conclusion, animals are a diverse and fascinating group of organisms that have played a crucial role in the history and development of life on Earth. Understanding and appreciating their biology, ecology, and cultural significance is important for both scientific and cultural reasons. As we continue to face global challenges such as climate change and habitat destruction, it is increasingly important to prioritize conservation efforts to protect the world's animal populations and the ecosystems they inhabit. Many species are currently facing extinction due to human activities such as deforestation, pollution, and poaching. Gene Transfer Process The process of gene transmission is essential to understanding how genetic information is passed down from one generation to the next. Gene transmission involves the transfer of genetic information from parent to offspring, which occurs through a process called meiosis. Meiosis is a type of cell division that results in the formation of gametes, or sex cells, which contain half the number of chromosomes as somatic cells. During meiosis, the chromosomes in a cell pair up and exchange genetic material in a process called crossing over. This results in genetic diversity, as the offspring inherit a unique combination of genetic information from each parent. The gametes produced by meiosis, including sperm and egg cells, fuse during fertilization to form a zygote, which contains a complete set of chromosomes from each parent. The zygote then undergoes cell division and differentiation, resulting in the development of a new organism with its unique set of genetic traits. The process of gene transmission is not always straightforward, as genetic mutations and variations can occur during meiosis, leading to genetic disorders and diseases. For example, an error in the meiotic process can result in the formation of gametes with an abnormal number of chromosomes, known as aneuploidy. Aneuploidy can result in conditions such as Down syndrome, Turner syndrome, and Klinefelter syndrome. Additionally, genetic mutations can occur during DNA replication, leading to changes in the genetic code that can have profound effects on gene expression and protein function. Some mutations may be beneficial, providing an advantage in certain environments or conditions. While others can be detrimental, causing diseases such as cystic fibrosis, sickle cell anemia, and cancer. Understanding the process of gene transmission is essential for the diagnosis and treatment of genetic diseases. Genetic testing allows for the detection of genetic mutations and variations, providing valuable information for genetic counseling, family planning, and personalized medicine. Furthermore, advances in gene editing technologies, such as CRISPR-Cas9, have revolutionized the field of genetics, allowing for the precise manipulation of DNA sequences. Gene editing has the potential to treat genetic diseases by correcting the underlying genetic mutations, as well as to enhance desired traits in agriculture and biotechnology. In conclusion, the process of gene transmission is fundamental to understanding the molecular basis of inheritance and the development of genetic disorders and diseases. 
Meiosis and fertilization are essential processes that result in the transmission of genetic information from parent to offspring. While genetic mutations and variations can have profound effects on gene expression and protein function, Advances in genetic testing and gene editing technologies hold promise for the diagnosis and treatment of genetic diseases and the enhancement of desired traits in various fields. The continued study of gene transmission and genetics will undoubtedly lead to new discoveries and technologies that will shape the future of medicine, biotechnology, and agriculture. Moreover, the process of gene transmission also plays a critical role in evolution, allowing for the gradual accumulation of genetic changes over time. The genetic variation resulting from mutations Genetic recombination and other mechanisms of gene transmission can provide the raw material for natural selection, driving the adaptation of species to changing environments. Additionally, the process of gene transmission can be influenced by environmental factors, such as exposure to toxins or radiation, which can increase the risk of genetic mutations and variations. For example, exposure to ionizing radiation is a known risk factor for cancer, as it can damage DNA and lead to genetic mutations that contribute to the development of tumors. Furthermore, the process of gene transmission can also be influenced by epigenetic modifications, which can affect gene expression and contribute to the development of various diseases. Epigenetic modifications, such as DNA methylation and histone modification, can be influenced by environmental factors, such as diet and stress, leading to changes in gene expression and the development of diseases such as cancer, diabetes, and cardiovascular disease. Moreover, the study of gene transmission has important implications for personalized medicine, as genetic variations can affect an individual's response to drugs and other medical treatments. Pharmacogenomics is the study of how genetic variations influence drug metabolism and response. Allowing for the development of personalized treatment plans tailored to an individual's unique genetic makeup. Lastly, the study of gene transmission has important implications for agriculture and the environment. As genetic variation and inheritance play critical roles in plant and animal breeding, as well as in conservation biology. The identification of genetic markers associated with desirable traits, such as disease resistance or drought tolerance, can be used to develop new crop varieties that are more productive and sustainable. Similarly, the study of genetic variation can provide valuable information for conservation biology. Allowing for the identification of unique populations and the development of strategies for preserving genetic diversity. In conclusion, the process of gene transmission is fundamental to understanding the molecular basis of inheritance, evolution, and disease. Genetic variation resulting from mutations, genetic recombination, and epigenetic modifications can have profound effects on gene expression and protein function. Influencing the development of diseases and the response to medical treatments. The study of gene transmission has important implications for personalized medicine, agriculture, and conservation biology, and will continue to shape our understanding of the natural world and our ability to address the complex challenges facing society today. Furthermore, the study of gene transmission has important implications for understanding the molecular mechanisms underlying complex traits and diseases, such as obesity, autism, and Alzheimer's disease. Genome-wide association studies GWAS, have enabled the identification of genetic variants associated with these traits and diseases. 
providing valuable insights into the underlying biological processes and potential targets for drug development. Additionally, the study of gene transmission has contributed to our understanding of the genetics of behavior and cognition. Genetic variants have been identified that are associated with intelligence, personality traits, and mental health disorders such as schizophrenia and bipolar disorder. Understanding the genetic basis of these complex traits can provide valuable insights into their underlying mechanisms and potential therapeutic targets. Moreover, the study of gene transmission has important implications for reproductive medicine, including in vitro fertilization, IVF, and pre-implantation genetic diagnosis, PGD. IVF involves the fertilization of an egg outside the body and the transfer of the resulting embryo into the uterus. PGD is a technique used during IVF that allows for the screening of embryos for genetic mutations and variations before implantation, reducing the risk of passing on genetic disorders to offspring. Furthermore, the study of gene transmission has led to advancements in gene therapy, which involves the use of genetic material to treat or cure diseases. Gene therapy can involve the introduction of a healthy copy of a defective gene, the suppression of a gene that is overexpressed, or the repair of a genetic mutation. Gene therapy has shown promise for the treatment of genetic diseases such as cystic fibrosis, hemophilia, and sickle cell anemia. Lastly, the study of gene transmission has important implications for understanding the genetic diversity of human populations and the history of human migration and evolution. The analysis of genetic variation among different populations can provide insights into their ancestral origins and migration patterns. Additionally, the study of ancient DNA has allowed for the reconstruction of the genetic history of extinct human species.